we talked a little bit about nutrition. Uh, when it comes to cancer, what role does sugar play? Sugar, sugar plays a huge part because sugar is the primary food of cancer. Mm -hmm. Cancer loves to, to eat sugar. It doesn't really necessarily eat it. That's just my <laughs> non-doctor's perspective. But it, the cancer it ferments glucose in order, to in order to produce energy. And cells have to produce energy to live. So cancer cells are anaerobic. They ferment glucose in order to live. So sugar plays a huge role. If you deprive them of their primary fuel requirement, you have a good chance of killing them. And so cancer is, because cancer loves sugar, sugar is the first thing that should go in an anti-cancer diet. If you're, if you're really serious about combating cancer or preventing cancer, don't eat sugar. I don't mm -hmm. eat sugar. Now, sometimes I'll ingest it and I won't know it. You know, if somebody serves me some baked chicken with a sauce over top of it, it's mm -hmm. probably got some sugar. Mm -hmm. I'm going to eat it, okay? I'm going to eat it. But I don't add sugar to my foods. I don't eat white processed sugar. I don't eat desserts. So sugar is a good thing to eliminate. Now, the next question would be, well, what about fruits? Because fruits are high natural sure. sugar. Your body metabolizes fruits much different than table sugar. Okay. Now, if you're a cancer patient and you feel lead, you, you can eliminate all fruits. That, that can't be a bad decision. But maybe you don't want to. I know many people that have done, that are, they call themselves fruitarians. Mm -hmm. I know a lady that, from Panama that had, had developed a very serious breast cancer. She took on a fruitarian diet. All she ate was fruit totally cured her cancer. Really? Okay, but it's up to you. The main thing is I would recommend avoid processed sugars. Um, the natural sugars in fruits and vegetables are much more um, utilizable by your body mm -hmm. and less harmful than anything processed like white sugar. So if sugar's bad, then artificial sweeteners must take care of that problem then, right? Yeah, well, yeah, you don't get the calories with mm -hmm. the artificial sweeteners, but the calories are not the problem necessarily. For instance, with uh, aspartame. Aspartame is a huge problem because it's a neurotoxin. Dr. Blaylock talked a little bit about that last week when we talked. He's, a, he's heavy into aspartame and MSG, as a matter of fact, mm. both which are excitotoxins. They, they excite your brain cells to death. Aspartame is a problem because it causes brain lesions, brain cancers, stroke, nervousness, jittering. I mean, there's a list of 500 symptoms that aspartame causes. Mm. Now, how did it ever get approved in our food supply? That's a story in and of itself with, with um, G.D. Searle. Mm -hmm. And uh, Donald Rumsfeld back in the early 80s, and you can read about it in many places online about how that actually got approved. It was actually on a Pentagon list of biowarfare agents in the mid-70s. And it was, a, it was stumbled upon by a scientist at G.D. Searle that was working on insecticides, and he found one that was sweet. That's, that is the inception of aspartame. Stay away from it, because not only is it, uh, does it cause brain lesions and cause brain cancers and cause a host of other problems, and this has been documented by the the, uh, the adverse what's it called the uh, not the vaccine adverse reaction but by this there, there's a there's a list that the FDA compiles of adverse reactions mm -hmm. to different chemicals. This has been accounted for, and if you extrapolate the, based on the fact that only I think 10% of people that actually have a bad reaction report them, and based on the actual numbers, I think it's extrapolated to something like 10 million cases of problems with aspartame has been have been uh, would have been reported over the last. 20 years if everything had been uh, reported instead of just a fraction. I don't know if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. it's just, it means that the, the aspartame, uh, the problems from aspartame are universal. Everybody has problems. The, main, the most common one is a headache. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, how many people do you know that say, after I drink a Diet Coke, I got a headache? Aspartame. It's because of the aspartame. But not only that, it's the, the fact that aspartame, if you're looking to lose weight and you're replacing sugar with aspartame to avoid the calories, calories. It's been shown that, that aspartame triggers receptors in your brain that make you hungrier later. So while you drink the Coke, you, or Diet Coke or Diet Pepsi or whatever, you may not be getting the calories. Mm -hmm. An hour now from now, you're going to go eat food that you wouldn't have eaten before because it just created this hunger sensation in your body because it stimulated mm -hmm. these different neurotransmitters in your brain that make you hungry later. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that's why it's, I mean, how often do you see a huge fat guy drinking a Diet Coke? Something ain't working mm. right there, Scott. <laughs> and it's because the fat, well, it may, he may have been fat before. I mean, I'm not saying that, mm. but it's, it definitely creates hunger in a person later.